What have shareholders told you so far, obviously, within these first 24 hours since announcement? Yeah, well, yesterday we had the chance to talk to investors all day. And uh, we, we have a great group of investors. And those conversations generated a, a tremendous amount of enthusiasm about the future, both the near-term future and the long-term future, because of the unique strengths that each company brings to uh, what is a... a a changing field of cancer diagnostics. We're really at the dawn of molecular medicine with, the, uh, with two leading companies coming together. So talk to me about the synergy number because, you know, as someone who covers mergers for a living, I looked at that and it looks low, 25 billion after three years. Is that just because you're being conservative on what you put out or is that a reflection of the fact this is two kind of distinct lines of business? Well, Ed, you know, that's really because these are uh, companies with different products and different sales forces and, um, and, and different uh, scientific teams that, that are focused in different parts of cancer diagnostics. So you have exact sciences focused on the early detection of cancer and genomic health, which is focused on helping to guide the right treatment to the right patient. So we announced a $25 million combined synergy three years from now and fully uh, realized three years from now. And, um, you know, we think that that is uh, appropriate. It, obviously, over time, we will be able to create uh, very positive revenue synergies and investors see that and understand that. And talk to me a little bit about this, this key product that they have, uh, Oncotype DX, because the potential there seems fairly significant. At the moment, it's going after estrogen-positive breast cancers. Obviously, there is a big market there, but there's also progesterone-positive. Could you take it there? And if so, how do you sort of take it from where it is now into that even bigger slice of the market? Yes, uh, the Oncotype DX breast test is really an amazing test that has become the standard of care in the United States for women who are diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. M um, most women actually don't uh, respond to chemotherapy, yet they have to go through the suffering and the impact of chemotherapy. And Genomic Health has done these major large studies which have answered the question uh, with this test whether women need or don't need that chemotherapy. Outside of the US, only about 10% of women get this test. So we'll have um, a, a singular focus to make sure that women outside of the US uh, build uh, or have the, the chance to get access to the test and use it to guide treatment. And then we will build upon that commercial organization bringing through Exact Sciences pipeline products, uh, colon cancer screening products and other tests that will also impact how cancer is diagnosed and treated all around the world. So, We're really excited so about So, Kevin, this an interesting part of the trade does seem to be this international piece that obviously you get with genomics, they have that presence. Will you be using that to take colon guard overseas as well? Because at the moment it has a huge piece of the US market, $15 billion addressable market here, but obviously even bigger overseas. So will, you, will we see this product go elsewhere in the world? Yeah, and one of the amazing statistics is that even in Europe, only 25 to 30 percent of people are screened for colon cancer. In Europe alone, 150,000 people die of colon cancer every year. One of our goals is to bring a colon cancer screening test appropriate for Europe to Europeans and to Asia and all around the world. We in, in the U.S. have seen screening rates increase since the late 90s, and you have seen the mortality rate decrease. We are committed to doing that globally and can't wait to get started working with the genomic health deep in infrastructure and platform globally.